Hello, my name is Hirsch Trevetti. I'm a fourth year medical student at the University of Texas Southwestern in Dallas, Texas. Today I'll be talking about very long-term outcomes of robotic mesh sacrocolpopexin. Special thanks to Alana Christie and Dr. Philippe Zimmer. I have no affiliations to disclose. Um, to, so to start, robotic operations and technology have continued to rise in popularity, especially within urology and other fields where operations within the pelvis are done frequently. We began utilizing robotic surgery for pelvic floor reconstruction as early as 2007 um, and some in 2006, providing us with a relatively larger data pool from which to draw for this kind of report. There are many challenges to reporting on this kind of long-term follow-up data for uh, robotic mesh sacrocolpopexy, specifically the relatively recent advent of the technology in general, the advanced age of many of the patients who would undergo this type of surgery, the potential comorbidities of these patients, and it's important to consider the patients themselves and whether repeat surgery for a potentially a quality of life issue plays into their mental decision making. So to take a step back, robotic mesh sacrocolpopexy is a, an operation done to address pelvic organ prolapse. Um, it's one of the many surgeries using native tissue versus mesh, so this one uses mesh to address prolapse. The mesh is attached to the anterior vaginal wall and the posterior vaginal wall and then hitched to attach to the anterior longitudinal ligament in front of the spinal column. The mesh is in a Y shape, as you can see underneath the text. Ultimately, this surgery can be done open, laparoscopically, or robotically. Here, we conducted all our surgeries robotically. On the right, you can see the two images showing intra-op robotic um, procedures with the bottom image showing attachment to the anterior longitudinal ligament and the upper image showing attachment to the posterior vaginal wall. We seek to report on the very long-term anatomic and functional outcomes following RMS for symptomatic pelvic organ prolapse at a single tertiary care center. So our study design is as follows. We conducted a retrospective chart review of consecutive women undergoing RMS for symptomatic pelvic organ prolapse from 2007 to 2013 with at least five years of minimum follow-up. If the patients had in-person follow-up as of 2018, then we used the EMR, otherwise a structured phone interview was conducted. The data collected included baseline and follow-up physical exams, POPQ or Baden-Walker findings at in-person visits, validated questionnaires like the urogenital distress inventory, incontinence impact questionnaire, and global quality of life. And additionally, we collected demographic data, indications for the index operation, perioperative care, um, as well as need for reoperation for vault prolapse, secondary compartment prolapse, secondary urinary incontinence, or mesh exposure. All of these follow-ups were done by trained FPMRS examiners. Our primary outcome was anatomic failure, defined as vault prolapse recurrence on exam to stage 2 on POPQ, or the need for reoperation. First, looking at the baseline and perioperative characteristics, we note that the median age of surgery was 67, median BMI 25, um, importantly, about 35% of patients had prior prolapse surgery, and about 96% had a prior hysterectomy. <clears throat> the operative time was around four hours with a two-day hospital stay. So our results, 55 women total underwent RMS for, for pelvic organ prolapse between 2007 and 2013. 28 of those had either in-person or telephone follow-up after 2018. Six of the patients were deceased, and of those, two had family members that reported the patients had no subjective recurrence of symptoms. 21 patients were unable to be reached beyond the first year of their operation. The most women had posterior compartment and vault prolapse at about 51%. 11% had anterior compartment and vault prolapse, and 33% had triple compartment prolapse. Only 5% had vault prolapse only. The mean physical exam follow-up time was 47 months, longest follow-up being at 104 months. And on physical exam, the C point went from a mean of minus 2 to minus 8.8, .8, with a mean change of minus 6.9, which was statistically significant. And additionally, the AP and BP values were statistically significantly improved, with mean changes of minus 1 and minus 1.3, respectively. Three patients had failure by physical exam without symptoms. Six ultimately required reoperation for recurrent anterior compartment prolapse at a mean of 33.5 months after their index operation. Surgeries were a combination of anterior corporophy, anterior vaginal wall suspension, and one open sacrocolpopexy. 
five of the six were asymptomatic after repeat operations. Ultimately, four patients total required reoperation for mesh exposure at a median of 12 months, and six patients had bothersome stress urinary incontinence, with three managed with injectable at 31, 39, and 56 months, and two managed with slings at three months and 35 months. The patient reported questionnaires showed durable improvements at a median follow-up of 120 months with a mean IIQ of 0.46, a mean quality of life of two, and a mean urogenital distress inventory of four. To our knowledge, this is the longest follow-up study examining recurrence of pelvic organ prolapse anatomically or functionally after RMS our reoperation rate beyond five years was approximately 16%, which is consistent with previous reports on five and six year reoperation rates at 13.3 and 10% respectively. Our mesh exposure rate was 7%. One important unique point regarding our report is that all procedures were performed by the same surgical team with follow-up done by FPMRS trained practitioners. Notable limitations include the high rate of loss to follow-up, which is unfortunately unavoidable in this elderly population as well as increasing length of time from index operation. Additionally, given the relatively recency of the technology, there's a steep learning curve, and this took place at a teaching center. Ultimately, in the future, with increased familiarity with the technology and further advances in the technology itself, we would expect these outcomes to continue to improve. Additionally, the introduction and use of other modalities to help plan surgical approaches, such as MRI defecography, will continue to better support our index operation. Ultimately, the take-home robotic mesh sacral colpoplexy provides durable, symptomatic, and anatomic improvement in pelvic organ prolapse over the very long term. Thank you very much. Um, we would love any engagement with the presentation in the comments below, and we'll be sure to answer any and all questions that you have. Thank you all very much.